Yeah. Wait just a second. Can we turn on the lights? Maybe. Um, and I, I wasn't here on Thursday, but someone else did music, didn't they? Yeah. You didn't? I did. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I actually found a lot of really interesting information, and I also composed a song that has the Fibonacci sequence in it. Um, <laughs> but what I found is that Fibonacci is really the building block, like or the building blocks for all music, and. Um, it dates back, I mean, centuries ago. Mozart, for instance, used the Fibonacci sequence in his music, and I have to look at the little thing. But um, I, everyone knows who Mozart is. He composed over 2,500 works or pieces of music in his lifespan of 35 years. And um, he was obviously the greatest composer, one of the greatest composers in the world to mankind. Um, what's really interesting about Mozart is that he never had multiple copies of a piece of music. He always had one original copy. And what he would do is he would hear the music in his head and then write it down and compose the music and that would be his only piece of work. And I don't, has anybody ever seen the movie Amadeus? Yeah, I've seen okay. it. No, that's, that's kind of fictional, but at the same time it really shows a lot of how he was as far as he had one original copy and I mean that's all, that's all he used for his music and it was always perfect because he had heard the music in his head before. And a lot of people relate that to the fact that he did use the Fibonacci sequence. Um, Mozart always had a lot of like doodles of like numbers on the sides of his pages and stuff. He never affirmed, he was never like, yeah, this is Fibonacci, but that's what a lot of people relate it to. For instance, in his, let's see which one, in, in a lot of his symphonies, there were two distinct sections. And um, in, I think it's Sonata number C, or no, number one in C major, there in the first section there are 100 measures in the first <coughs> movement. Um, the first section of the first movement has 32 measures, and the last section <coughs> has 68 measures. Um, and this pattern of like the big picture and then the two distinct sections is also seen in the second movement of that piece. Um, and everybody knows the piano. There's one really interesting thing about the piano is that um, does anyone know like what an octave is? Like C to C. Okay. Um, well, here I have this little picture. Um, you have the octave going from C to C, and within that, there are 13 notes, including the white and the black keys. There are 13 notes um, in that there, all the white keys put together are eight notes. The black keys within that octave are five notes. And then, as you can see, the black keys have a section of two and a section of three. So, that's really cool because it's all from the Um <laughs> Also, let's see, okay, there are 13 notes in the span of or there are 13 notes in the span of any note through an octave. Um, and then like the scale, which would be C to C, eight, or eight, eight notes, um, the fifth and third notes of that scale create the foundation of all chords. And the whole tone is two steps down from the root tone, and then the whole tone is the first note of the scale. So does that make sense? It's really kind of confusing to me as well, but it's all one through 13. Um, um, then, like I said, I wrote this song and the Fibonacci sequence, I, I, tried, I did use it through the whole thing. Um, see if I can explain this. Okay. For people that don't know, I guess, music, if you have a piece of music, you have your specific like, measures in a song. And um, in the measures, like, say that it's in 4-4 four, four time. That means that there's four notes or four beats to each measure. Um, in the song, which is kind of like any, any music piece, all the notes have to fit together to make four beats. So there's a whole note. <coughs> in my song, I have like the first. The first measure has a whole note, and that's the one. That's all that it's comprised of, and it's four beats. Um, the next section, there are two half notes, and half notes each get two beats, so that equals four beats. Um, the next section, there are two quarter notes and one half note, which is three notes all equaling four beats. The next section, there are four eighth notes and one half note, which is equal five. See the pattern. Um, and then the next section, there are eight eighth notes. The next section, there are twelve sixteenth notes and one quarter note. All of these together equal four beats, and all of these stacked on top of each other is really how a lot of musical pieces are composed. You have like the one whole note and then the two half notes on the bottom, and blending all those together, they create the four beats and the entire piece of music. So I'm sorry if I'm not making any sense, by the way, guys. Um, but this is the song that. <coughs> oh no, the speaker's not working. Can I turn these on? No. Um, they're on. You broke this? 
Yes. You may need to turn it up. Just unplug it and see if it'll play <coughs> without the speakers, I guess. It's so Sorry, that was really quiet. Can, it, can y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, don't play again. Okay, well, <laughs> like I said, that um, is the, in the exact word I just told you guys. And what's really cool, like I said, is that really if you have like your notes, if you have the notes that you're supposed to use, which is the Fibonacci sequence, then all you have to do is just stack them on top of each other and create a song. So, it was really simple. Um, but yeah, I don't have any numbers in mind either. <laughs> so, that was it. <laughs> What's questions? your major? Music business. Mm -hmm. My question was uh, going to be if you used Finale Notepad. You already answered that. Yes, like I said, I did the, um, the free 30 day trial. So I'm going to have to buy it. Just use it. But yeah. Any other questions? Well, he had a question before I did, but oh, I also sorry. have a question. Um, did you happen to find any concert songs that matched up? Really with, with what I just said? What you um, yeah, it was the Sonata 1 in C major. So, and I have a little mini picture of it right here, but you can't really see, obviously, like the distinct sections and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, like I said, in a lot of his works, he had the whole, or the whole piece, the whole piece, and then each had, like, the distinct sections. And a lot of time, they relate to the Fibonacci sequence. And his sister said that he loves mathematics. So. Okay. Do you know of any uh, CDs that have been um, recorded and sold, like this Fibonacci. called like the Sound of Fibonacci? Or something? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You can go online. I went online and like listened to some, and it was just like sound waves and movements and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if any CDs I can find any of that. It's really. I was thinking that you could find a lot more, like of just plain songs, but they're not. Um, so have you tried applying this concept to any earlier composers like Stravinsky? I haven't, but I do know that Billy Joel uses the Fibonacci in a lot of his music. Um, he'll have, like the whole song will equal a certain amount of time, and then at the climax of the song, and you can find this in a lot of different songs, but like at the climax of the song, it's usually like exactly half of the whole picture, and then you have like the right of the words and stuff. So. I have one more question. So we're, we were talking about the golden rectangle and how it's visually appealing to us. It, do you think that this is the case with, um, I don't know, like kind of the, I don't want to say like the golden ratio, but like the golden ratio of sound, it's just more appealing yeah. to us because of the pattern. I mean, I definitely think that. And that there's a pattern that is innate within us that we just enjoy like visually and we like to hear it. And we, yeah, know. I mean, definitely. And like I said, a lot of the notes and the notes in song are based around Fibonacci because like you have the whole note and then the two half notes right under it create that like dun, dun. well I can't do it because I'm a normal voice but um, I mean yeah yeah they, I, definitely. I think that they need to uh, make Fibonacci food and have the golden ratio in food so we can enjoy mm -hmm. the taste as well <laughs> the, the golden pie <laughs> the golden pie <laughs> the golden pie pie <laughs> 
Maria, c'est très simple. <rire>